One confusing image in the Land Rover workshop manual, which I'll put uh, here, is the assembly of this piece here. There's a spacer with a chamfer on it, but also there's your four-wheel drive locking ring, your diff lock ring. Which way do they go together? Because the drawing's really painfully bad. So look, there's a chamfer on here. Can you see the chamfer? Teeth. So the flat piece goes against the teeth and the flat piece goes against the flat piece. So that means there's a little chamfer on here, a little chamfer on there, they both go opposite each other. Easy. Now we've got the uh, assembly, we've put the bearing, we've put the shaft, the bearing on the shaft and then push the shaft inside the housing. That was kind of easy. We've also put the snap ring in and the oil seal. Now I was just about to put the flange on when I forgot to tell you about this. You can see uh, this flange here. The oil seal has been running and worn a groove in here. This isn't good. But for now, I'm going to go down to JP and see uh, if we can put a bit of a sleeve on that. Now this is a question. I'll, I'll just go and find another part and I'll tell you about it. I might have done it already, I don't know. Here it goes, just, just in case I forgot. When you put your bolts through here, the only thing on the front flange that retains it is this uh, sleeve here. It's pressed on. Now, what are you going on about? Well, I could actually buy a speedy sleeve to recycle this shaft. And what it is, is it, it's a very thin stainless steel sleeve made by SKF. And it will slide over the top of here, because it's this is inch and three quarters. And it's got like a shoulder on it, like this. It's got a shoulder on it. So it pushes on over this sleeve. Thus, you don't have to really do any machining on this and it'll be the right size for the oil seal. In fact, the oil seal will grip a bit tighter. The problem is, because we've got that ring on, if I put a speedy sleeve on it now, you'll never get the bolts out again without destroying the sleeve. Not good. So just be careful if somebody says, oh, just put a speedy sleeve on it. Remember what you've got to take out if you need to disassemble it again. A common one for this, who is this coming? I don't know. <laughs> uh, a common problem with this is people think they can put a speedy sleeve on the bottom of the uh, steering box to repair a damaged shaft. This is not good because you won't be able to get it to bits again, ever. <laughs> Alright, back in a bit. Right, the next bit we've got to assemble is our diff lock assembly. Remember, there's our collar, this chamfer, goes in here and the chamfer points towards the gearbox towards that way All right. next thing instead of chewing on trying to put this spring on inside this box put it on in here first and mind your eyes make sure the bloody thing doesn't ping all over the place but it usually holds itself in like that right next thing put it in the right way around Locate it on the collar, like that. Next thing, we've got to put our pin in. Now, Land Rover suggests you put it in from this end. Uh, there's, a, there's a cap on the end. I, I've done it like that, but I found it was just as easy to do it this way. So, uh, we're going to put the pin in. This piece is the top. Even though it's got a cutout at the bottom, it doesn't do anything. This is the top. You shouldn't have to hammer it, but sometimes it's a bit funny to get lined up. There you go. Now, remember I said that flat goes to the top. Push it through. There. You can see the flat goes to the top here. Flat. Trapped in my flat. So the next thing we need to get some pliers. Because we're going to put these little uh, retainers in. These little things here. I haven't got any pliers. I wonder if I haven't got any pliers out here because I've got bloody everything else. Oh, here's a pair. So 
what we're going to do is pull the spring back because there's two flats on this spring pull the spring back get your corn like that your, your washer whatever you want to call it horseshoe slide it over Whoop. slide it over with it keep saying slide it over it's not going to go Oop. I'm losing my grip <laughs> Just that bit tight, what's this one? There you go. Like that. And then we do the same with the other side. I don't know why that one was so tight. But these do bend quite easy, so be warned. Right, let's put the spring, pull the spring back. Like that. That was easy, wasn't it? No tears. Now I've already assembled this unit here with the diff locky thing. I use white grease on the rubbers. Um, for the uh, O-rings. And I'm only doing that because JP told me to do He said it's good stuff more slippy. So we're going to locate this tang here in this groove here like we don't know. It's going to get in the groove and so is this here. So uh, you might have to be a bit imaginative, use a bit of your imagination to get this in. Because this is offset if you see what I mean. Ah, there you see. And then turn that till the bolts line up and it goes into that slot. Oh, where's the persuasion tool? There we go. Is it going to go? And we'll get a couple of bolts to put through there. Next thing, the ball, the spring, lock tight. I don't know, you shouldn't call it lock tight because it isn't lock tight. What's this? This is, this is Lloyd's high strength locker. I bet it is. Now you turn this down, you turn this down until it's flush. I usually like to get a little uh, punch when I can find one. Have I got a punch on? I had a punch on here the other day. No, oh, yes, yeah, it's not Put a little dob on it either side, the casting, just to fold the casting over to uh, hold it in place. So that should be that bit. Now, I think what we'll do now, get some of these things out of the way. We'll put our intermediate gear in now, because we've got good access to put the pin in. Two O-rings. They look identical. This one's smaller than that one. This one goes over the pin and this one goes into the, the casting. Now this can be a bit tricky but not impossible. He's, he said finding it impossible. There we go. That's it. Double check it's not kicked over. Right, the next thing we'll do, we'll get hold of 
our uh, dismantling tool and perhaps you can see what I was trying to do here flashlight oh I keep calling it flashlight I've been here too long if you guide the bottom bearing in it's really easy let's go and get some parts right let's see if I can make a fool out of myself Oh, how easy was that, children? I've put some white grease in the bush here, in the bushing, steel bushing. I've put some white grease underneath and I've put some white grease on this pin here. In fact, I shall put some more in because I'll just wipe some off. Now we can put our pin in. Sort of. Oh, how easy is that? Look at that. A little tippy guitar. <laughs> well, that's it. We'll just box it up and fill it full of sawdust and it'll be fine. So no, what we'll do now is uh, we've got that together, clean off the excess grease. Now I did have a word with JP about these bushes, I think I mentioned it before, but he likes to make the hole in the casing first and then he likes to make the bushing because otherwise we'd have them all CNC made, uh, CNC machined. Uh, and he doesn't like to do them like great big thick bushes because he says it's going to make this casting a little bit thin so that's why he doesn't like that. Who am I to argue? Now, with that in, now what we can do we can apply some sealer around here so we're going to just have a bit of a tidy up and we'll come back. So here we go, I'm going to apply some sealer Not too much. It dries very quickly. You should have enough sealer in one tube to do a whole gearbox. Should. Now, this is an important bit. So you've gone all the way around that ring, but if you notice here the ring doesn't go, that there's a shaft here that interferes with the ring. It's not completely round. So what I do is I get a little bit of sail around here, I go around there like that look, come down there a bit, come down there a bit, and then now we're ensured that that's going to go. I mean, I shouldn't have put maybe some seal around. Um, maybe I shouldn't have put some seal around this bit, but hey-ho, who cares? It's a free country. Now we can put that piece onto there. Uh, somehow. I'll get some new bolts, I'll fasten that down. So now is a good time to test our diff lock. Make sure you put that ring in the right way around because if you don't, it won't flick in and out. Right, so this is it. So that's diff lock out. And this is diff lock in. And what I'll do is I'll turn the gears a little bit so they're out of sync. And you can see perhaps why there's a spring on there. So there we go. There. Now listen. Is it going to go? Of course it won't go, will it? Hmm. 
it's working so perfectly that it won't sort of grind like I wanted it to. Oh well. Ah, there. Now, you see there? This is why sometimes you have to drive your car a little bit to go to diff lock, and this is the reason why we have the spring. So I've put it into diff lock, but it won't move until I turn the gears and it goes like that. Wasn't that wonderful? First time you've seen it on TV. Brilliant. Oh.